Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while, hasn't it? Well, today I've got something big to share with you. That's kind of big as in physically big, big as in it's taken me a long time to do it, and big as in if just figuratively in all manner of ways, big. It's a big project. It's a big printer. Let me go and just fetch it quickly. I won't be a moment. quite big. So this is it. This is my wonderfully large printer. So then why did I bother? What is it for? Why did I make something quite so massive and heavy? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, I wanted a large format printer because I didn't already have one. Everything I have at the moment is kind of into three Prusa size and it's kind of 200 by 200 by something 250, 220-ish, like that kind of volume. Whereas this monstrosity is 300 by 300 by 350. And I'm currently working on little ways that I can get a little bit more height on it. I think it should be capable of around 400. We just got a, a little bit more to stretch, move a couple of things around, and I think we'll be able to get there. The second reason I wanted to have it was to be able to test things. So nearly everything on this printer, well, no, not nearly everything. A lot of the parts of this printer are exchangeable. So you'll notice all these drag chains that I've put in, the large one here for the Z axis, and the nice one here for the X axis, as well as another third one for the Y axis. At both ends of every drag chain is a set of connectors. So I can disconnect easily this entire set of stuff on the hot end and just swap it out for a different extruder, different hot end, different sensor, different fans. Anything I wanna swap out is just unplug it and plug another one in. Perfect. And I've even done that for the heated bed. Again, wires down the front, a couple of connectors here for the thermistor and the heater wires, as well as a ground wire, and that's pretty much it. You can swap it out for a different one. How long did it take? I'm glad you asked. Currently, it's about seven months in. It's not totally finished yet, but I think now is a good time to tell you about it, so I'm telling you about it. That seven months included discussions on who I'm gonna work with to be able to do this project, as well as all the design work that I needed to do, a bit of troubleshooting, a lot of building, a lot of testing, a lot of additional parts that were not necessarily included in the initial design. And it's just kind of progressed over those seven or eight months to this point here. Again, not totally finished, but I'm very happy with how it stands at the moment. So what is it named? As you may know, the first printer I designed was called Steve, the superfluous tri-dimensional electronic vector extruder. And that was my Core XY machine. It's still also a very successful machine, although I don't actually have it built up anymore, sadly. So this one doesn't actually have a name at all yet. So I thought instead of just deciding on one myself, I would let you make suggestions. So in the comments section below, feel free to leave a name that you think is suitable. And also at the 3D Meetup UK for 2019, which will be this weekend, the 18th and 19th of May, 2019, I will have a comment suggestion box where you can put in a note to suggest a name for the printer. Out of all those suggestions, if one comes up a lot more than others, I'll probably go with that. Otherwise, I shall take my pick of any of those names and I shall let you know sometime in the near future what the name of this printer actually is. Is it open source? Uh, currently, sort of no, but yes at the same time. So at the moment, nothing is published at all but that's not because I don't want to, it's just because I haven't done it yet. It's not totally finished. When I get to a point when I'm really happy with all the details in the design that I've got, I will be uploading a whole load of step files for 3D stuff, and then 2D drawings for PDFs and things like that to give you some guidance on assembly, as well as all the electrical stuff in terms of harnesses, connectors, wires, gauges, and all that kind of thing. It really will be nice and in-depth like I did in my Steve guide. So there'll be a lot of hours that go into that, but we'll be also doing a lot of video builds along the way to show you how it's made, why I made certain decisions about how certain certain things go together and all sorts of things like that. Really, you may not necessarily think about it if you're not into design yourself, but there's a lot of little decisions that go into making something like this. There are hundreds and hundreds of parts 
and making sure each one is in the right place, doing the right job, is really important. So I think it's quite interesting to go through all those little design aspects and see what's good and maybe what could do with improvement. I'm sure there will be improvements. This is not a design of a build of this is exactly how you should do a printer. This was, I want to build a printer that is a test machine, so I built it. Now let's work on improving it. Let's work on changing things and making it better over time, as well as being able to keep the modularity of being able to swap out the entire hot end and extruder and sensor and whatever. The bed, even the bed is a magnetic plate, so I can put a different surface on if I want to. It's really just anything is, there is no limit. It's a limitless printer, no, it's not really, but <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that I can do with this now that will just open up different opportunities, which is absolutely brilliant. So when can you see it? Well, as I already mentioned, this printer will be at the 3D Meetup UK in Birmingham this weekend, the 18th and 19th of May, 2019. So stop by, I've got my own stand, or it might be residing on the Usner stand for some periods of time, as they did a lot in terms of getting me this printer. So depending on where it sits throughout the weekend, you will find it at the show and it will be there. The plan is to have it running, so hopefully that'll be uh, possible. It does run, I have printed some things, so I definitely know it works and it does work quite well. If you're not gonna be there that weekend, don't worry. There will be lots of content on the channel about this printer. So you may have seen the stuff that I've done about Steve a couple of years ago. It's gonna be a little bit like that. I mean, probably a bit better, hopefully, but a lot of in-depth build guides of how to build it, the decisions I made, etc., etc. I've been through over that already. So yeah, lots to come on this machine, but if you want to see it, 3D Meetup UK 2019 in Birmingham this weekend, 18th and 19th of May. Give us some specs, I hear you cry. No, I, no, I can't actually, but yeah, I'll tell you anyway. So we got most of the frame parts, all the extrusion, all the you know, motion components and everything like that was supplied by Oosnest. And that's all just basically similar in kind of principle to your kind of Creality printers, the Ender 3 CR10. In principle similar, but there are quite a few differences, obviously. I mean, there are a lot of differences, but that's the kind of principle there. With the bed we got from Filler Farm, and that is a filler base with a switch plate and their filler print surface, which I've done a couple of prints on. It's really nice. Uh, we've got a six millimeter aluminium bed on the bed itself, as well as another six millimeter aluminium plate for the bed structure underneath it. Whether we need both of those is yet to be decided. There's gonna be some obviously design development as I already mentioned, which will probably take a look at the weight of the Y-axis and the motors driving it. The control board is the Duet 2 Wi-Fi, which is my first time using a Duet board. And there's a bit of a learning curve to say the least, but now I'm a few weeks into it, a couple of months maybe since I started using it, it is really good. I do really like using it. It does give you a lot of control that you didn't even realize you were missing on other things. So really like that. The electronics wise, it's 24 volt system. So we've got a 24 volt power supply and that does the stepper motors, fans, control board. And then the bed itself is mains powered. So it's a 240 volt bed, which is 450 watts. In terms of end stops, we are using standard mechanical end stops at the moment. When I get a little bit more educated on the Duet board, I'm gonna be changing over hopefully to a end stop less system. So at the moment we've got, for example, end stop at max on uh, the X axis, which means we're homing to that end and then coming back to this end to do our prime on this side of the bed. It doesn't really matter. You could move where you do the prime and all that kind of stuff, but I quite like to have the homing to min. So we'll home against a uh, solid stop here, which won't need a cable, which is why the end stop's over there. So cable feeds through the drag chain, all kinds of stuff like that. Anyway, lots of little details. So yeah, let's move on to drag chains. We've got a 20 by 25 drag chain for the Z axis, because there's a lot of wires getting through it. And then a simple, smaller 10 by 15 drag chain for the X axis, and the same again for Y. In all of the drag chains, we have silicon wires, so everything's nice and flexible and bendy. So hopefully that should last a long time. We have, um, what were they called? Can't remember the name of the connectors, but I think they were Molex. Anyway, they're locking connectors, so all the connectors are locking, so there's no risk of anything coming loose or detached or anything at all during any print, because everything locks in nicely. So we've got a bunch of connectors, so we can swap out literally everything. All the fan motors, extruder, heater, the heater should be capable of doing on these wires, like 80 watts, so that should be plenty for pretty much everything. Um, Titan Aero, 
with a well kind of standard v6 block at the moment i'm looking at doing the volcano block which i've already bought but just not installed yet hopefully might have time to do that before 3d meetup uk if not we'll just be running the standard v6 with a 0.4 nozzle i might try and change over to nozzle x because i've got one of those what else are we looking at i think that's pretty much it for like high level details at the moment yes if you do want to take a look definitely come up to 3d meetup uk it's going to be there you can take a look at it ask me whatever questions you like i should be able to answer hopefully all of them <laughs> we'll see oh yes oh yeah mains power bed so obviously ssr just noticed it down here so mains comes in through the power supply with the earth earth and everything goes to the bed so you've got an earth bed so there's hopefully very little risk of any risk of any electrocution or anything shorting there and that's pretty much it for technical kind of details. So of course, this was not all my work. I have to give a big shout out to Oozenest. They did supply basically 80% of all the components here. The only exception really is the uh, bed assembly, which is the filler farm kit, which is the switch plate, magnetic sheet, the actual bed surface and the uh, print surface on top. Everything else was Oozenest. So we've got a whole load of custom machine parts, which they did for me, which was absolutely brilliant. We've got custom parts here that all fit the open build system, which is what the kind of rest of the frame is built on. All the motion components, the stepper motors, the um, nut blocks, all the end stops, power supply, literally like most of it was Oozenest. So huge shout out to them. Thank you very much. So that's it from me today on my Final reveal of my secret project that I've been working on for a whole eight months so far. I'm really happy with it. Hopefully you're gonna be really happy with the content that comes out of it and the capability that I can now do with this massive machine. I'm really excited about it. Hopefully you are too. If you wanna see more of it, as I've already mentioned, 3D Meetup UK 2019, 18th and 19th of May in Birmingham. I think there are still tickets available, so come drop down and take a look. Thank you very much for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to see more behind the scenes and stuff like that. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. If you want to join through Patreon, there's a link in the video description and I will see you in the next one.